everybody. Welcome to Hope Water Project Virtual Kickoff. This is our first virtual Hope Water year, and I certainly hope it'll be our last. But it's not going to stop us from working hard for people we love on the other side of the world who need our engagement. And I know that there's going to be a lot of you that are wondering whether you can do it. I want you to know that you can. We have a great lineup of people tonight to talk to you about Hope Water Project and how it works and certainly how it affects our brothers and sisters in Christ in Kenya, the Pokot people. And so thank you for being here. Thank you for your interest. And I want you to know that as we go through this process, if you're wavering, I want you to know this is making a difference. You're making a difference in lives that are certainly precious to God. And you're precious to us too. So thanks for being a part of this. Hello everyone, my name is Jay Lucarelli. I'm part of the Global Partners team here at Kensington and have the, the opportunity to work with our global partners around the world. I've also been working in Kenya for more than 20 years and currently oversee our water program and other projects there. Since 2003, Kensington has been partnered with Julius Mergor and Pokot Outreach Ministries, or POM, as you might hear it called. Uh, Julius is a Kenyan from the Pokot tribe and he's dedicated his life to sharing the gospel with his people and helping them any way that he can. Uh, and he does this through a very holistic approach to ministry. Uh, the partnership also includes Harvesters International. They're a US-based organization that helps provide financial accountability and oversight uh, for the work in both Kenya and the South Sudan. Uh, in my roles for both Kensington and Harvesters, I spend a significant amount of time each year on the ground uh, in Kenya uh, checking in on the progress of different projects that we've got going on. I try to visit every well to make sure that it's complete and functioning and meet with the, the community. Um, and my favorite part is meeting with leaders to strategize and dream about the future. Uh, Kensington is helping in a variety of different ways in Kenya. Um, in addition to the water effort, uh, we're helping in areas of medicine, education, leadership development, church planning, and child sponsorship. Palm began drilling wells way back in 1996 uh, to bring both the physical water needed uh, to survive on a daily basis uh, and as well to build a bridge to the spiritual water of the gospel. Um, fast forward to 2011 when a crazy group of, of people from Kensington decided uh, to form Hope Water uh, and to get a thousand people to raise a million dollars uh, in the throes of a financial crisis, not unlike we're going through right now, uh, to bring clean water to the Pocot people by running of all things. Uh, it was crazy exciting when we reached the goal and really it was just the beginning of an incredible journey of transformation. Uh, one of the goals of the water program is that each community have the opportunity to hear and learn about God. Uh, this is done through the context of relationship uh, and is accomplished in Pocot through community engagement uh, and building trust with uh, community leaders and, and the area chiefs. Uh, before the well is installed, ministry staff meet with the community, uh, discuss um, where they'd like the well to go. Uh, we try to draw them into the process um, and involve them in decision making. Uh, we send a hydrogeologist out uh, with the group to identify the area that is most likely uh, going to have water. And the community then forms a water committee made up of mostly women since they're the ones that, that do most of the work. Um, and the, the water committee becomes responsible for the well after it's installed. Um, after the community votes on, on the water committee, uh, they get trained on how to manage the well and to make sure that people are taking care of, of this precious resource. Uh, one of the main functions of the water committee includes maintaining the pump when necessary. Um, the amount of use that each one of these pumps gets, uh, there's things that wear out and a breakdown is inevitable. Um, <clears throat> so we try to prepare the, the community to uh, know what those signs are, to you know what the signs are to look for, uh, things that might lead to a breakage um, so that they're able to prepare the community, they're able to raise the funds necessary to, to make the repairs. Um, we've tried to help each community move from a dependency model of waiting on someone to come and help them uh, to a more of a sustainable model where each community has the tools uh, and knowledge uh, that will empower them uh, to be able to do what they can for themselves. Um, if you've been around Hope Water for very long, you've probably heard somebody say that water is just the beginning. Um, 
what we mean by that is by providing water, uh, this starts a process of spiritual awakening. A lot of development takes place in an area. If you were to visit one of the, the well sites, you might ask how a drill rig even got back to where the, where the well is. Um, oftentimes the community has to cut in a road um, for the rig to even get back there. They have to cut down trees, move rocks, um, but they're so committed um, to the well being there that they're willing to, uh, to do that work. Oftentimes it takes them several weeks to do it. So a well is often the catalyst for other development. Um, people settle around a water source uh, so they don't have to move around to find water or to uh, feed their livestock, which are very important to them. Uh, this settlement means that a small town or village tends to pop up um, with little businesses and um, larger groups of people. Uh, this often leads the government to um, improve the road and install other infrastructure like uh, schools and possibly medical facilities. Um, when people settle, a church is able to, to be established. Uh, the churches often uh, start kindergarten classes uh, that grow into primary schools and sometimes even secondary schools. Um, so education is introduced to the area. Uh, and then the obvious health benefits of drinking clean water um, that help reduce typhoid and uh, other waterborne diseases. Um, so water does change everything, both physically and spiritually. Um, and I thank you for being part of this process, part of this journey with us, uh, and being a catalyst for this transformational change. My name is Peg Ullman, and I am the Child Sponsorship Coordinator um, for an initiative here at Kensington Church called No Child. Um, it began 10 years ago in May um, to come alongside our partners in Kenya, India, and now Nepal to really help those children that are most vulnerable. Um, we called it No Child because we believe no child should live without hope. And we believe that no child should die from starvation or preventable disease, be denied an education, or live without Jesus. big part of that statement is really having access to clean water, right? And without that, these kids can't achieve those goals and have that hope. So when we first started No Child, um, I had the opportunity to go to Kenya. Uh, on the first trip and um, you could tell that these kids were suffering from diseases, um, that they were not healthy. Um, a lot of this was, the majority of it was due to not having clean water. Um, being in partnership with Hope Water and with our global partners in Kenya, that has all changed. And not just our kids in the sponsorship program, but communities and children all over the Polka are seeing the benefit of having clean water. You know, instead of spending every day walking uh, to, to get water and sometimes not even clean water, these kids are now spending their time going to school. Um, I had this thought the other day, um, just thinking about our staff and how they feel about the kids in Kenya and how they try to take care of them. Being a parent and a grandparent myself, I started to think about what that would feel like to not be able to provide clean water for your own child, to not have them go to school because you can't afford to let them go um, and take that time um, that they would normally be walking for water and to get their education. And yet know that education is what's gonna change um, their communities and, and really their whole country. Um, just that um, getting out of that cycle of poverty and water is such a big part of that. Um, over the past 10 years, um, I've had the incredible opportunity of seeing children that have gone from dire states to now thriving. Um, it's been amazing. And I had a little talk with Benson the other day. Um, Benson is the manager at Kodich Children's Home. And I asked him, I said, Benson, what was it like before you had clean water? And he said, well, I can tell you this, that now the children's clothes are tight. And I love that. I love that um, the whole vision that, they, that that fills my mind of just kids bursting out of their clothes because they're healthy and they're strong and they're thriving and they're going to school and they're just um, having to outgrow their clothes. And I think that's a great uh, way to see it in my mind's eye. Um, he also told me that now that the girls are going to school, that there's less young marriage, you know, the younger marriages that we 
so fight against in the Pocot. Um, that is such a huge problem. And now that the kids have, are going to school, the girls are understanding that education is so important and they want it so bad and they don't want to give in to the early marriage. You know, there's so much to do. We're not done yet. Um, there are still communities that need clean water. There are still women who are walking two and three and five hours to even get dirty water. There's still kids that are dying from diseases that they don't need to die from if they just had access to clean water. So no child thanks you from the bottom of their hearts for all that you're doing, whether you're walking, running, biking, whatever it is you're doing, your partnership with Hope Water means that we are going to be able to offer hope to so many more children. Thank you. Wow. I just, I love our team. And I love the people that are leading us in this journey, for Jay and Peg and Heather and everybody. And I just am amazed that in our lifetime, we have gotten to be involved as brothers and sisters with people that we would have never known apart from miracles of God. A lot of you uh, probably don't know that uh, Julius Mergor, who leads the ministry of the Pocot and I were classmates 30 years ago. and We lost contact for many, many years. God brought us back together in a miraculous way. And we, we've gotten to be a part of his team's amazing work among the people that really were coming out of the Stone Age, really. And and we have been a part of their nation building. I know the first time that I went there in 2003, I couldn't believe the suffering or the hardship or every child just sitting in a pile of dust, children's noses running and eyes filled with infections and and just the death and the loss. And right before this quarantine kicked in, I got a chance to go back with a small team of people to see wells that you guys have helped create. And in every well, there was life and laughter and applause and joy and kindness. And it was all a result of the compassion that you guys have expressed. And so I wanna thank you for being a part of that in the past and for, for continuing because the need and the job is still huge ahead. And so one of the places that really struck me the most this last trip was uh, early in the, one of the mornings, we were at a school that a year and a half before had received a well. And it was a beautiful morning and it was a place that was a little more verdant than some of the other places that we visit. And we were in the trees and there was grass and all the children were running in their school uniforms to school. And a lot of you uh, have never seen this, but you know, Kenyan kids, particularly kids up in the mountains, can run like no one else. Obviously, they're the greatest distance runners in the world. And I was standing with a good friend, Mike Covey, and, and Mark Schulten, we were watching these kids run. And I just remember thinking in my head, is this heaven? You know, is this, because the kids were running in a way like they were gliding, weren't even touching the earth, and there was laughter and joy. And when we talked to the principal, we said, so what difference has this well made in this community? He said, well, a year and a half ago, there were 60 students here, and most of them were struggling to get their work done because they had to walk three miles one direction, three miles back, and do that twice a day for water. And he said, now, because we have a well, the school has gone from 60 kids to 320 kids. And their national test scores have been above average now across the country. So it's just been an amazing journey. He said, plus, there are 1,500 uh, people uh, minimum who get their water every day from the community. And so we literally have created, without even knowing it, a world-class school. And we've created a stable community that's going to affect thousands of lives for years to come. Guys, that's just one well of all that we have done and all that you have done by your hard work and your labor. So I'm been asking you to join in with us again and make this happen, even though it's so weird, but to run and maybe find someone in your family that you're not having to social distance from or grab a friend and run with a Facebook. I don't know what the rules are going to be, but I will tell you that there will be joy in heaven beyond anything you ever imagined because of the love that the people of Hope Water have with the people of Pocahontas. It truly has been a magical relationship, journey, partnership, and I thank you for it. So let's have an amazing year, 2020 Hope Water Project. 
love to you all.